Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. So I wanted to talk about the products that I dislike the most from some of my favorite brands. And I was thinking, oh, is this gonna, and actually it was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Because I actually have some of my most trusted favorite brands listed things where I feel like almost always it's gonna be like, yep, that's gonna work. Yep, I'm gonna like that. Everything is great. Not everything is great. And I think a lot of this comes down to personal preference, to makeup aesthetic, also to the type of skin that you have, um, you know, whether it's oily, combo, dry, uh, normal. I always forget that there are people with a normal skin type because <laughs> I'm combo. But beyond that also, the you know, the older I get, the more my skin changes and things just don't work anymore. And then there are of course the aesthetic aspects of makeup. What sort of look do I like on me? and what sorts of things are kind of being pushed out there in a trend sort of fashion. So the first one is 100% controversial, <laughs> and it's Charlotte Tilbury. Now, I haven't been following Charlotte's career since the very beginning, but once I kind of saw the work that she did and the sort of makeup she was applying as a working makeup artist and then creating her own line i was like yes i like that that's beautiful that's what i want and when she released this product i was sure it was going to change my life now i know that people are like wait what you don't like and i it's not that i don't like the hollywood flawless filter it's not that i don't feel like there's a place for it but out of all of the other glowy liquids that I have, I never reach for this one, never. And it is actually, it's a really pretty product, but I, eh, you know, out of everything there is, this is not the first thing I reach for and I don't understand why that is. I feel like when we were just hitting the highlighter craze, there was either really sparkly, really shifty, really colorful blue, purple, green highlights. And the only person who was making highlight that I wanted to wear was Charlotte. And then the minute she released this, it was like, that's gonna be exactly what I want. I did not have success with this. Now I have figured out how to use it, but beyond that, I sometimes want a little bit more than this gives me. And I, I suppose I could be, you know, trying to mix it in with foundation or other things or use it as a primer, but I really haven't. I've had this for a couple of years. I should probably let it go, but you can see here, like this is where the air gap is. I've used almost none of it, almost none. And for a product as expensive as this and as iconic as this, we just never connected. <laughs> I feel kind of bad because I was just like, no, not for me. So it's not that it's a bad product. I just don't find myself reaching for it. I love M Cosmetics. I have loved M since day one. I have an entire M playlist. I will link it for you here and in the description bar down below. And there are so many things that I'm obsessed with. Like I'm wearing M brow products today. I'm wearing um, one of their contour cream shades today. Like, like they put it out, I'm like, yes, give me more, give me more, give me more. And I still haven't tried their new kind of like putty blush. I forget what it's called, but they have like two shades of cool and a warm tone that comes in this cute little pink compact with a little like, a puff that you can, I don't know, it looks adorable. I just haven't been convinced after all the blush I've been buying this year that I needed more. But I have so many holy grails from M. So many, so many, so many. That when I could not figure this out, and I, I can now, now I'm doing better, but it's still like I have to, oh, dear, am I really gonna use it? And out of everything, this is at the bottom of the heap for me, and it's this. This is the Serum Balm from M Cosmetics. This color, is stunning. This one here is called Soft Amethyst and she's beautiful. But for me, of course, the problem was before they changed the packaging to this little squeeze dropper, they used to have a push button dropper that never worked. Um, and this is a really beautiful, like lovely emollient. You see how much glow there is to that? If you put that over foundation, where you haven't set it yet, but you have your foundation on, and I start to do this, it eats through everything. The best way for me to do it is to put some on my hand or on the back of a palette 
to use like a synthetic brush, pick it up, you know, kind of bounce it off on the back of my hand and then apply, I can get it to work, but sometimes I still struggle with this. And it's not that the product itself isn't beautiful. On a very light makeup day where I have just a little bit of concealer and nothing else on the rest of my face, but I want some color, this is perfect because it gives that shiny glow where it gives a little bit of color, not too much. It hydrates the skin, it has skincare ingredients in there. It's lovely, but she, needs some hand holding. And I don't always have time or energy to make a product work when I have to bend over backwards. I know that some people, this is like their ride or die, they love this and they, and I, I like it. I was about to be like, okay, this is the second one I bought. No, the first one I bought and then they reformulated. So I purchased it to see if the reformulation cleared up the problems that I was having. She's nice, but she sometimes gets forgotten because of how difficult it is for me to apply. I have always loved Glossier. There's very little from Glossier's makeup line that I haven't tried. I love their brow products. I love their lip products. I love their powder and concealer, and I'm so excited. But when they came out with those monochrome eyeshadow palettes, okay. So as easy as Glossier is for makeup, like they want a really easy, lightweight, like almost no effort. They want it to look like you, but better your skin, but slightly enhanced, your eyebrows, but just a little bit fuller. Like everything is you, but like their cloud paint, it's supposed to be the easiest, most foolproof makeup to wear. That eyeshadow, in my experience, was not. And I got the really pretty kind of olivey green ones. Loved it, loved it. And because they don't have an eyeshadow primer, I was assuming that the eyeshadows would work well without. No, I had nothing but creasing, things settling into my crease, um, sparkle fallout. Um, and I liked the idea of the same shade in three different finishes. The idea was great. And maybe I picked up the wrong shade because I have heard other people wax poetic about how good it is. And maybe it was just the shade for me, but I felt like I had to work so hard to make it look good and to last all day. And it just was so contrary to the Glossier vibe that I'd gotten up to that point. You know, like, you look good. Well, no, I didn't, not in your eyeshadows, I didn't. <laughs> I know that's kind of harsh, but with everything being so easy and so effortless, all of a sudden to have to work that hard, I was like, no, thank you. And that is probably the product. That's the reason I have not picked up any of their liquid eyeshadows. I was like, no. I don't know that they have cracked the code on eyeshadows yet. So me and Glossier, uh, skin products like concealer, foundation, powder, yes, give it to me. But eye products, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I have not made it a secret that I am obsess obsessed with Lisa Eldridge makeup. When Lisa launches a new product, Oh, I need to try it. I have to know. I, I mean, like I have her new um, liquid lipsticks right here. I have like an entire like tray full of all of her lipsticks. Like I, I love, my heart beats for Lisa's releases. I get so excited. I set an alarm. I never want to miss it. And here's where I'll tell you, I'm not saying this is a bad product because it's not a bad product, but there's one aspect of this product that I struggle with. And because I struggle with it, I don't want to work that hard. And it's this. Now, here's where I tell you, I'm a lip addict. Like anytime there's a product, liquid lipstick, bullet lipstick, lip gloss liner, I wanna try it, I wanna know. And from my favorite brand, oh yes, yes I have to know. So when Lisa initially launched her Gloss Embrace formula, I bought two. And since then, I have not purchased another. And here's the kicker. It's not for the formula. I love the formula. I think the colors are beautiful. You know what's keeping me from using these? And it's so stupid, so stupid. So I almost feel like this one really shouldn't even be on this list, but it is a point of pain for me. And this is the reason I will not spend the 20 what dollars on another one. It's the applicator. So you would think this little slanted applicator is everything, you know, but it's this little slightly rounded end. It's, it's a little bit more oval, but it's the fact that there's no sharp edges on it. I don't know. When I am, am applying it, I find that because of the shape of the applicator, it's unlike any other. I just kind of, I get it everywhere. And it's used totally user error, but I haven't wanted to figure this out enough to figure it out. 
And, and it's such a shame because the formula is amazing. It feels so good, especially when she launched kind of clear ones with little sparkles in them. <gasps> like I was like, oh, I want one, but I'm like, no, 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 you don't like the applicator. And it's stupid that it's not the product, but the applicator that's keeping me from buying more of these. Man, I like everything about it. And somebody told me, why don't you decant it into something else? I could, just, again, do I really wanna work that hard? <laughs> I want it to be easy like this, and, and I'll, I'll probably do fine just now, but I feel like, you know, as I'm putting it on, especially at my Cupid's bow, again, right there, I end up with it <laughs> where I don't want it, and it's just that I'm not used to the shape of the applicator. But the product, stunning. The shades, incredible. I, I should like drop one of these in my purse and force myself to use it until I become acquainted. Now I do a lot better with other chunkier doe foots because I feel like everyone's using a chunky doe foot right now. And if they're not, they're using the little thin ones that are like a paddle that have velvet on them. I, I just know how to use those. And I haven't figured this one out and I don't like to get product where I don't want it. It's stupid but that's the reason. The next brand is Make Beauty. I did a complete deep dive into the cosmetics that they have created. I will link that for you in the description bar down below. Um, earlier this year, and I really loved it. I have fallen in love with so many of their products. Um, I love their blush. I love, I'm wearing their mascara today. I love their prototype mascara. Also really love their eyeliners. There's so many things that Make has, but I'm like, yes, yeah, so good, I need another. And I haven't even been familiar with the brand for 12 months yet. I'm still like buying multiples of the Serum Balm or the Serum Balm Intense. They're just so good. But the one product, and I like the product, again, it's the applicator and it's this. This is the Sculpting Brow Tint. I have the shade, I think it's Cool Brown. Okay, I don't know because they just released a new brow tint. And I don't know whether it's to replace this or whether it's, something that they're adding to their line that they'll maintain this because the, the product in here, the, first of all, the color for my eyebrows is perfect. Um, I like the way that it holds my brows, but do you see, this is like a mascara wand and a chunky mascara wand. And I know my brows are very heavily filled in right now, but they're, they're kind of sparse, especially from the arch on out. I have like six or seven little straggly hairs over here. And as I'm trying to tint those hairs with this, guess what happens? This. And that is not what I want. So this is easier to use if like the stopper in here pulled off more product. So what I do when I want to use this is I roll off like the extreme excessive amounts of product that there are in here. Oh my goodness, like I'm still rolling it off. Do you see how thick it is? It's a lot of product. And then I carefully go in with this or I will take like a little detail brush like this, use it and but do you see how hard I have to work? I don't want to work this hard, but when this product is on and it's not too much and it's not soupy and goopy in my brows, this holds like a dream. And it's the right color. Like I like everything about it. And it looks like my eyebrows just left the salon getting tinted. But this, like just to open it up and go, oh no, there's no way, no way at all. This next one is a case of I disliked it so much, I returned it. Okay, so I love Merit. Merit makes them absolutely stunning, really easy to use. It feels kind of like Glossier, but grown up. And I feel like it's the sort of easy, beautiful, effortless makeup that I want to wear. I originally got one of their lip oils. This is the one that I have here in Cara Cara. Love it. So this spring, when they launched their new Gelee Lip Slicks, Yes, and there was one in there that was stunning. It was a brown, I forget the shade of it. I'll throw a picture up for you. But I was head over heels. And nowhere in like the description of the product did it say pH adjusting. Now, I love how it felt on my lips. I love how juicy it made my lips look. But you best believe me in a pH adjusting product, we just turn bright fuchsia pink. 
There is no, you know, the best pink for you. No, that is not the best pink for me. I think that's the best pink for maybe one person in the world and only one person. I don't know. I am not the sort of person where like pH adjusting products ever work on me. I always look like a crazy person. And had I known it was pH adjusting, I wouldn't have purchased it. But I do love their lip slicks. I think the lip oils are beautiful. But unless you know what you're getting into and unless you know that you look good in pH adjusting things, I would not purchase the Gelee lip slicks from Merit. But I was I was so disappointed because the shade that it looked in the tube, this kind of beautiful reddish brown, like it, it was everything I wanted. And then I looked like a person at Halloween. It was not pretty. I have not tried everything from Sydney Grace. I've tried a lot. I've tried a lot. Sydney Grace makes my favorite, hands down favorite eyeshadow formula. Their pressed eyeshadows are amazing and I reach for them like all the time but they're lip creams I used to have one and it was the one that was described and the photos online looking would be closest to something I could wear daily and it was just not for me it was not for me and I having a neutral skin tone I can wear almost any lip shade almost any there are some that make me look like death on a cracker but there's very very few that I cannot wear and I'll tell you a lot of the shades they make either tend to be very warm and terracotta or very cool and very mauve now I don't prefer a pink or a totally <laughs> I shouldn't say that because I'm wearing it right now very mauve lip but I really feel like um the colors, it's the colors that keep me from trying more. Like if I could walk into an Ulta or into a Sephora and swatch and find the perfect one, because the formula felt amazing on the lips. Um, everything else worked really well. It was just the, I got the wrong shade. And I feel like the online swatches that I've seen by um, influencers who got the whole line when they first launched lip creams and then the ones that I've seen on their website, they're, they're just not calling to me. The formulation I feel is nice, it was beautiful, it was colorful, it was glossy, it was opaque, it was everything that you'd want kind of a glossy lipstick to be. But, hmm. And so for me, I just have not never been interested in their lip toppers or their lip creams. And I know people really love them and maybe you have the right shade, but I'm sticking to the eyeshadows and I'm gonna skip those lip products. The last brand is Pat McGrath. Now, I love Pat McGrath. I'm wearing Pat McGrath eyeshadows today. I lo love the cheek products, the bronzer, the blush, the highlight. There's so much good. I love the eyeliner. I mean, like, Pat just has a beautiful vision. It's very opulent. It's very more is more. And I like that. And I have to be in the right, like, mental headspace to want to wear that. But when I do, I feel like a million bucks. And when Pat mentioned that she was going to be launching lipsticks, <gasps> You best believe my little lipstick addict's heart went pitter pat. And when I saw the shade, they were beautiful nudes, beautiful bolts. I loved everything about it. And she came out with, I believe, the matte trance formula and the luxe trance formula. And I think the luxe trance, if I'm remembering correctly, were were they creams? I think they were creams. I know she has a satin formula now, something a little bit sure. She's got the balms. I've tried the balms. Eh, they're okay. For the price, do I need them? No. But for me, I was like waiting, like like a little kid at Christmas, like, when is it Christmas? When is it Christmas? When is it Christmas? And when I finally got those lipsticks in my hands, okay, they're not bad. They're not bad. And are they like the best lipstick in the world? In my opinion, no. Because <laughs> all of the ones I have, they're gone. They're gone. Um, the packaging is very much a choice. You know, the black packaging with the gold lips on it. I thought it was cute, but the truth was more than that. I was expecting like the best lipstick ever because that was kind of the campaign as they rolled these lipsticks out years ago. Um, and I love the colors, especially like the nudes, the nuanced kind of cool nudes, warm nudes, pale nudes, but they all look like they were, and like they'd show them on models, they were stunning. But the problem for me was for the price point, I was not willing to pay that price and have what to me was just an okay lipstick. And then within like a year and a half, mine started like shriveling. I'm sure that it was like the seal on the lipstick wasn't tight enough and you know, 
whatever was in there that was moisturizing kind of like evaporated or whatever and the lipstick just like fell out it wouldn't like it didn't break off at the bottom the whole thing just kind of like boop, came out of the holder <laughs> and I could put it back in there but then it was wobbling I don't know it just seemed like a disaster beyond that I feel like that was true for the matte ones but for the Lux trans lipsticks I just I never liked them I never liked them. I felt like the colors were better for the matte formulas than for the cream formulas, but I, I just, I didn't have to have more. Like when I tried Lisa Eldridge's lipstick formula, it started out with mattes and then went to other things. Like I love the formula so much, I have to have more. And I have, as I'm looking over here, like more than 30 of them. And for me, when I fall in love with something, that's where I just like, I, I need more, I need more. And I never got that from Pat McGrath's lipsticks, which is interesting. I feel like she has a really good lip liner. I feel like, her, I like her gloss a lot. I feel like her gloss is really beautiful and nuanced because they have some beautiful shades. But then if you want something that has sparkle in it, you never feel the grittiness. The formulation of the lip gloss and the lip liner are impeccable, but I am not sure that I would ever want to go and buy another lipstick from the brand. And a lot of it is for the price. The lipstick did not deliver on what my expectations were. They're not bad lipsticks. They're, they're just not as luxurious as other ones, in my opinion. Thanks so much for watching today. I think it's interesting to talk about makeup this way because I feel like when we're having to spend our hard-earned dollars to get products, um, Talking about what works and especially what doesn't is important. Now I know it all comes down to are our expectations the same? Are we wanting the same aesthetic? Do we like the same sorts of things? That could be helpful. And maybe I'm describing something you're like, that's exactly what I want. And for me, I'm like, mm, didn't do it for me. That's perfectly fine. But I would love to know in the comment section down below, what's your favorite brand? And the one time you picked up something you were expecting like, ah, and it was like, oh. I was rooting for you. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section down below. Have an incredible day and I'll see you again soon.